And welcome back to the Halftime Report. I'm Bob Pisani here at the New York Stock Exchange. Time for ETF Edge. Let's talk about the December setup for ETFs. December, the number one month for stock gains going back 50 years. And on the surface, this looks like a very promising setup. 60% of NYSE stocks are above their 200-day moving averages, way above normal. And the small cap Russell 2000, ticker IWM, also recently broke out to a 52-week high. Joining us now, Andrew McCormick. Managing Director of ETFs Trading Solutions at Wallach Beth Capital, ETF consultant Chris Hempstead, formerly Deutsche Bank's head of ETF sales. And, uh, Andrew, it's hard to argue this setup is fantastic. Yeah, I think Best month of the year. And tech leadership, bank leadership, healthcare, three biggest sectors in the S&P 500 are the leaders. Yeah, the setup's good. You have a whole other year of uh, absorption of political, you know, not re overreacting to tweets and things like that. I think in September and October, you had a lot of people saying, you know, thinking about last December, clearly that hasn't happened. As you said, the setup's better in those in those sectors. And I think you will see some tax loss harvesting. Yeah. I think and, you'll see a little bit of that. Chris, this is not December 2018. We keep pointing out the Fed is not raising rates. We have generally, uh, let's call it a truce, an uh, easy truce on trade. And again, the global bottoming in the economy, a little hard to figure out, but very different scenario than last year, December. Yeah, much different. I mean, stick to what's really happening. Watch the flows. There's, there has been flow into value, but performance has been in favor of growth. 2020 is going to be an election year. Gold will come back into favor. It will be volatile. We have been desensitized to tweets, desensitized to tweets. So I think equities are in play, and definitely the positioning is equities are going to be, you know, in focus for 2020. Value has outperformed growth. We have IVE versus IVW. Uh, that's in the short term. The big S&P 500 growth right. and value. But I have to say, when you have these stocks as value, come on, Apple is a value stock. We keep pointing this out. That right. Against it's all, all common P, sense, P, that's it. United yeah. Health and Bank of America and JP Moore, yeah. when these four stocks, some of the biggest stocks in the S&P are up like this, it's no surprise yeah. that value outperforms And I growth. just think it's money going to quality. It's people, again, just don't, they, they have gains already. Why take any risk going into the end of the year? It's now, got value over growth over three months, but the the three year, the one year, and the and the one month all favor growth. Profit taking, though, we've seen it in REITs so far this quarter. Yeah. We've seen it in consumer staples, consumer the, XLP, the defensive yeah. groups. Uh, is that going to continue into December? Just portfolio reallocation. Yeah. I don't think it's a I don't think it's an exit from REITs. I just think it's adjustments going into 2020, and uh, and some likely gains taking out of REITs. You'll now, see some big trades in the sectors, and that'll just be them switching from iShares to the select sector or whatever it is to make that trade happen. Gold's lost a little bit of its luster. We're not doing anything at all this quarter, only up 14% for the year. GLD has actually seen some outflows. Some of that, of course, is the costs associated yeah. with them. What's going to happen with gold? I think gold is back in play, like Chris said, once the year starts. There's just no reason to not you know, position yourself for equities. I don't think anyone's going to take a risk with the last three weeks of the year. But I could see gold be really in the first quarter coming back. With okay. the election on the table, you can't take gold off. Okay. Andrew and Chris, thanks very much for joining me.